Hiya, uh, and welcome to the 11th week of class. Uh, we're almost done, so I hope everyone's super, super excited. Uh, so we're starting this week with actually kind of a mini review. We're going to look at discrete conditional distributions. Um, and conditional basically means like conditional probability. Uh, and one thing we hadn't looked at is, well, what's a conditional distribution? Um, and so it's it's very similar to things we've kind of done um, and so it's not going to be too different uh, but it is a different way of looking at distributions that are kind of a little weird um, and so it's definitely something that um, you'll need to be able to kind of work with and do uh, so basically in the term we still we, we had gone over uh, this should say um, probabilities uh, conditional probabilities abilities uh, in the discrete case um, well, I guess no it's okay um, but we'd only seen a couple of discrete district we've only seen a couple so we're kind of gonna expand a little bit um, and look at things a little bit differently um, and so what I mean in that is kind of something like this um, so normally when we had been looking at something um, like a distribution uh, we had talked about something of this regard P for the probability that y is equal to y given that a random variable x is equal to some value of x. Um, we had done this with events, right? We had done this with events. We had done the probability that probability of a given b. And so now we're going to just replace everything with uh, distributions or with uh, random variables. And the thing here is that here, Notice how I'm telling you what my x is equal to. I'm saying x is equal to x. And so this is known as the conditional probability, the conditional distribution of y, given that x is equal to x. In other words, we require that x it has some value. Um, and so what we have is we actually, so recalling that we're using commas instead of intersection for, our, for the word and, uh, this gives us a normal multiplication rule or the chain rule. Uh, what this gives us is um, y is equal to y given x is equal to x. This times the probability that x is equal to x is nothing more than the probability that y is equal to y and x is equal to x. Um, and that's it. And we can actually break this down into the law of total probability um, as well. So I can say, well, I can just sum up over all the possible x's. So if I want to look at what the probability that y is equal to y, well, I can look at all the different x's I have, all x, uh, and I can condition it on that. So I can say, well, let me know when y is equal to y and x is equal to x. Or another way of looking at this is, remember, just the substituting this multiplication we have from before. Um, so we just have probability of y equals to y, x is equal to x, or sorry, given x is equal to x times x equals x. Um, and so like at first this might seem a little weird um, or like what we're doing and you'll kind of see why we're doing, um, why this is kind of different, right? So for example, this um, is not this is not the same as saying probability that y is equal to y given x. This and this are not the same. Not the same. Uh, so some people might try to write it as the right hand side. Um, just note that these are going to give you two different ideas and two different things of um, do, two different ways of doing things. Uh, so just note, these are, those are not the same. Uh, it's a common student mistake, so I figured I would let people know uh, ahead of time before there's a problem. Um, so let's kind of look at an example uh, since we haven't gone too far. Um, we're going to look at a very basic example. Um, we're just rolling a fair six-sided dice. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the number I rolled, uh, and I write down all the divisors of that number. Uh, so, for example, if I roll a 6, then the divisors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. They're all the numbers that divide 6. Um, and then I roll my 6-sided die repeatedly 
until I roll one of the div uh, divisors. Roll six sided die repeatedly until I roll one of the divisors. Um, so here you should, uh, like your spidey senses should come be going off. This here should be a uniform distribution, right? Uh, discrete uniform to be more exact uh, because you, uh, you have an equal chance of getting any one of the six numbers. And then the second roll you're doing repeatedly until you get some number. Uh, and in this case, you should think, oh, geometric, right? Uh, and so the question is then asking, what is the distribution on the number of times I need to roll the six-sided die the second time around? So what we're saying is, well, what's, how many times do I have to roll the die the second time? Notice how I don't actually tell you what the first die rolled. So we don't actually know. So first, first things first, we need to set up our random variable. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to let x uh, be the number to be the number I roll of a fair six sided die. Um, and here you can think of this, remember, as this having discrete uniform distribution. And we're going to let y be the second roll. So let y be the number, the number of rolls, right? We have to, we're counting how many rolls we need, number of rolls, until I get a divisor of what? Divisor of x. x is my first roll, so y is dependent on x. So I have to kind of look at what x is. So let's kind of figure it out. Notice right away that we actually know what the probability that x is equal to x is equal to, right? Uh, since it's uniform, we know everything is equal to one over six. Um, if x is, is in the set one, two, three, four, five, six. So if it's one of these numbers, then it's one six and it's zero everywhere else. Um, and since we're like most, I think most of us are not used to divisors, let's actually write down all the divisors. Um, so one, the divisors are, well, there's just the number one. That's it. Only the number one divides one. Uh, two, uh, we have one and two. Uh, three, we have one and three since three is prime. Four, we have one, two and four since two divides four as well. 5, 5 is prime, so it's 1 and 5. And 6, we saw earlier, this is just 1, 2, 3, and 6. Um, and so what we're going to do is, just to make life easier, we're going to let d sub x um, denote um, the number of divisors. Number of divisors divisors, divisors of x. So in other words, d of 1 is equal to 1, d of 2 is equal to 2, d of 3 is equal to 2, d of 4, it has 3 divisors, 1, 2, 4, so we have 3, d of 5 is equal to 2 because there's 2 divisors, d of 6 is equal to 4. Okay. So let's kind of keep going. What we're trying to figure out is p that w is equal to w. But first, let's figure out what um, y, like p of y given x is. Uh, so if I know an x, so if I know an x, or I guess if I'm given an x, um, if I'm given an x, uh, then the probability that I roll a divisor, the probability that I roll a divisor is, well, d of x over 6, right? I have d of x options, um, and I have 6 altogether. And we're, I'm going to write this down as p of x to show the probability for that number x. Um, and the thing is, we know that y itself is geometric, right? Um, we know that this is geometric because we're trying to figure out a thing. Um, 
So in other words, what we know in particular is y given, so I, what I should say is y given x equals x is geometric. Now, Notice here how I have y given x equals x is geometric. All of this is geometric. Common student mistake, so I'll write this here, common error, is to think y is geometric. This is wrong. y is not necessarily geometric. And we'll see that later. But it's a little note that it's y given x equals x is given geometric. It's dependent on this x. So let's kind of see what this gives. Okay, so I know the probability. We know that this is geometric. So in other words, what we can do is the probability that y equals y given x equals x. This is geometric. Um, and so this we know the, the probability, right? This is just q to the y minus 1, p of x, right? So 1 minus p of x to the y, y minus 1. This y is coming from here, right? Uh, and then times p of x. So this is really coming from the fact since y given x equals x, is geometric. In other words, if I didn't have this x equals x here, I could not do this. Now at this point, I can use the law of total probability. So p of y equals y, which is what we're trying to solve. This is given by the summation of all x. So in other words, we, are, we already know these x's, right? But we can, we'll write it down slowly. y equals y given x equals x times the probability that x is equal to x. So here we know the x's go from 1 to 6, since we have 6 die. Um, and we know it's 1 minus, uh, we know our px here, right? It's dx over 6. Um, and then our y, we don't know yet, so we'll just say y minus 1. Um, and then we want to multiply by p of x. So this is dx over 6. Right? So that's my, this part. And then all that's missing is this uh, p of x here. So here I just need to multiply by 1 over 6. Uh, and that turns out to be my distribution. That's it. So notice how this is not a geometric distribution. This is some nasty, disgusting distribution. Um, so we'll stop here for this uh, video. Um, but yeah, so notice how we can use a uh, conditional distrib we can find the distribution of a conditional distribution use it or um yeah i'm wor wording is bad today um notice how we can find conditional distributions using using other information uh, using the tools we've kind of built um so next video we'll actually take this one step further and look at what's called conditional expectation um so i will look so we will talk well, at least in the discrete case, we won't we won't do um, continuous yet. Uh, so I will see you in the next video for that. So uh, bye.